Are you tired of constantly running out of rupees in Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? With tons of powerful gear and items available to buy, you're definitely going to want to stock up on rupees as quickly as possible without worrying about running out ever again. Well, you're in luck because in this video, we're going to show you the most effective ways to farm rupees quickly and easily, so we've tested and rounded up three different incredible methods to farm this as quickly and easily as possible so you don't waste your time. So whether you're looking to upgrade your armor, buy whole new armor sets or you just need some extra cash we've got you covered in this video guide which will teach you everything you need to know to amass a fortune in no time. So get ready to become a rupee rich adventurer as we dive into the best ways to farm rupees fast and effectively in Tears of the Kingdom. So let's start it off with the first method the wings challenge. This is an easy and repeatable farm that will cost you 20 rupees to participate, but will reward you with 100 rupees for each bullseye completion. It's actually pretty easy and there's even a cheese so you win it every single time. Firstly, you're going to want to head to the Rabella Wetlands Skyview Tower. This is in the lower right or southeastern part of the map. You can use this tower to glide and fly over to the little island at the very bottom right of the map, and a good tip is to use the Wing Zonai device from the Sky Islands to glide over a large portion of the map without having to use your stamina. And another great tip is to hit that like button and subscribe down below so you can get extra lucky in your ruby farming. Thank you so much for supporting us and we're sending you good vibes if you did, thank you. Once you've made it to the island, you want to talk to the NPC Sesame who's standing on the northwestern tip of the island where you can see on our screen now. He will tell you about the camps of enemies around the island and ask for your help. There are three camps around, so make your way to each one and clear them out. After you've done this, you want to go back to the NPC Sesame and talk to him again. And this will then trigger the next part of the quest where we will need to find the secret cave entrance which is under the southeastern part of the island. So run back up to the top of the southeast rocky area of the island and jump off and then glide around the island into the secret cave like you can see we do. And inside there should be a big ship with a big skull on it. In this area, you're going to need to clear out all of the enemies, including the boss. This one might take a couple of tries, but once you get the hang of it, it shouldn't be too hard. We recommend taking out all of the enemies that shoot arrows up on the platforms off of the ship first. This will make it much easier when fighting on the ship. After you've defeated all of the enemies, the shrine room will open up. So make sure to go there and activate the shrine as this is your fast travel location for the island. Also take your rewards inside since there's no more challenges. Doing the quest was the challenge of the shrine. After all of this, go back to the NPC Sesame once again and claim your rewards for the quest. By completing the quest, we also unlock the challenge for this rupee farm. So once you've done this, you then want to head up to the top of the rocky area on the southeastern part of the island once again and talk to the people that have now appeared there. By paying them 20 rupees, you can then start the challenge. This challenge is simply to fly the wing glider into the middle of the smallest circle on the target in the water. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And I do suggest holding block as this will make it much easier to move around slowly and direct the wing where you want it to go. However, if you can't get the hang of it, you can actually cheese this by using the recall power. Using this power on the wing and then instantly stopping or cancelling it will make it lose all momentum and fall straight downwards. So what you want to do is fly over the circle in the middle and then use this power to instantly drop down and that way you can get an easy victory every single time. This is a repeatable and easy method and you will get better each time as you practice. But we have two more methods that honestly we just seem to think are better for farming rupees and other items. So next let's go over our second method which is to use amiibos. While this might not be for everyone, we know many of you have found your own methods for getting all of the amiibo scans for pretty much all of the Nintendo games. So it's time to dust those things off and get scanning because it's an incredible farm for many many things including rupees, fish, meat, fruit, weapons, bows, shields and more. Everything that you get from these amiibos will be helpful in some way and many of them can just be sold off for some quick rupees. However getting an armor piece is the best. It is based on luck and on which amiibo you scan for which armor piece you get, but it's still the best thing that you're looking for. This is because you can sell these armor pieces for a tasty instant 600 rupees per item. This is probably the fastest way to get rupees, but does require a bit of luck with your amiibos, because they can only be scanned once per day. But I'm sure many of you clever Zelda fans will figure out a way around this by using the local clock on the Nintendo Switch system. So get scanning and selling, because this is a surefire fast way to get rich quick. 
But next, let's go over our third method, which anyone can do. It's a prime meat and gourmet meat farm. This method is extremely useful for a variety of reasons. And from our testing, the only prerequisite is to have completed the regional phenomenal quest for the Hebra region. So make sure to complete this first so you can get on this farm. For this farm, you will want some form of cold protection, as it's a bit chilly in the snowy areas of the map, and the snow will slowly kill you if you don't have the right prep. You can easily cook up some cold resistance food with spicy peppers, and you'll probably have a ton of these already. If you don't, they can be found pretty much anywhere in the world, but an easy spawn is right next to the snowfield stable, which is where we will be farming anyway. You can cook these up in any cooking pot you like. We found a permanent one that we like to use in the lookout landing inside the bunker in the middle. Make sure to use two of these at a time and it will give you a five minute cold resistance buff. If you don't want to deal with applying food buffs though, you can go for a more permanent method by buying cold resistance armor from Rito Village. We believe you only need one star of cold resistance for this area, so the chest at 500 rupees is probably your cheapest option for a permanent fix to the issue. However, you might want to buy the hat too if you can afford it, since you're going to need it later on in the game in other colder areas anyway. The next thing on our prep list is to buy a bunch of arrows. Kakariko Village has a great general store, which actually sells a bunch of arrows that you can buy in bulk, so head over there and buy all of them as they don't cost too much. Next though, you're going to need a bunch of bows prepped since we will be shooting a lot of arrows and our bows will break. If you have a bunch of bows already you're all set, but a super easy way to farm bows is to find a goblin fortress, run inside and kill an enemy that has a bow. The enemy will then drop it so pick it up and save your game. Then let the other enemies kill you and then once you reload back in you can re-kill the enemy with the bow and pick it up, save and repeat. After doing this a few times you will have enough bows to do the farm. But you will also want a horse, and any horse will do. But if you want a cool and really powerful horse, the golden horse is one that we have a guide on our channel for, so definitely check it out if you want to get this golden boy. But if you don't have it, then don't worry. We're going to demo the farm for you with a normal horse, which will work just fine. It's just a bit slower. With all of that preparation done, it's now time to travel to the snowfield stable in the top left area of the map. Once you're here, open up your map and create pins just like I have around these locations. You want to ride from pin to pin, but keep a lookout for any stags, deer, wolves or bears along the way. The area should be relatively well populated with them as you ride around. When you do see one, jump off your horse and take aim with your bow to slow down time. This makes getting headshots super easy, and you will want to hit headshots which will instant kill them, or they are going to run away really quick. After they are defeated, quickly run over and pick up their meat, which will either be prime meat or gourmet depending on the mob type. These are needed for this farm. Simply keep riding around on your preset pins and collect as much meat as you can, the more the better. Once you have what you feel is enough, and again the more the better, head to your favourite cooking spot and cook together 5 of the same types of meat all at once. These food items will actually sell for a ton, some up to or even over 300 rupees each. Complete cooking with all of the meat you found, and then head over to a store any store will do and sell them. After you've sold all of this meat that you've cooked up, you're now stocked up on rupees for whatever you want to buy, and you can repeat farm this over and over again. So now you have several ways to get rich in the game for yourself, so if we helped you out, hit that like button down below and share it to a friend to help them out too. And the two videos on screen now we think you'll really enjoy if you did enjoy this one. Of course you don't have to watch them if you don't want to, but if you did like this video you're probably gonna like these ones too. And then tell us what you think after watching in the comments down below.